You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you in another Let's Play episode of Echo. Maybe you guys might be able to see my frame rate counter in the corner there. Okay. I'm just gonna leave it there. Anyway, guys, uh, whoo, goodness, I am kind of freak. I, I am kind of, uh, apprehensive about this. We just got rescued by Kudzu, and Kudzu messed Brian up pretty bad. Uh, we messed Brian up pretty bad, you know. Uh, we twisted his no-no parts, and, uh, he wasn't too happy about that, so, well, you know. <laughs> that's what you get for being, that's what you get for being an evil, creepy weirdo. No, no, uh, no judgment for what he's into, you know, I know uh, people are into that, but, you know, he seems more of the non-consensual kind of, uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so, Arches is the sequel, and The Smoking Room is the prequel. I'm going to be checking those out as well at some point, so let's jump right into this and see where this crazy train takes us. What was that music? All right. <clears throat> he stands slowly, keeping me in the embrace as he guides me towards the door. I don't remember much about the walk back to Kudzu's house, aside from stilted flashes of dirt and sagebrush. It's dark and hot, and my shirt immediately starts to stick to my sweaty fur. My legs are so numb that I don't even know if I'm moving them right. Kudzu has to hold me the entire way so I don't fall over. Crickets chirp all around us, but every few minutes I hear shouting and screams in the distance. Oh, okay, already we're yelling, like, alright. Look, a UFO! I try to look over my shoulder to see if Brian is coming after us, but Kudzu grunts and tells me to keep watching my steps. Some circulation has returned to my legs, and I'm able to at least match Kudzu's stride over the uneven dirt road. Still, it feels like a thousand needles are stabbing up my head, up my feet and legs and waves with every step I take. Yep, I hate that. I'm genuinely afraid that I'm going to wake up any second and find myself still stuck in Brian's trailer. None of this seems real. I'm still watching my feet in the ground, so I don't notice Kudzu's house until I almost kick the bottom step to his rusty trailer. Just the sight of a trailer is sending chills up my spine, even though Brian's trailer looks very different compared to Kudzu's. We stand in front of his door for a while as the raccoon fishes through his pockets for his keys. It's made extra difficult with me hanging on him. I can, I can stand on my own if you... Got it. Kudzu whips out a small, gold-colored key before sliding it into the lock. Once we're inside, Kudzu immediately kicks the door closed behind us before reaching back to turn the deadlock. Well, that looks cozy. The inside of Kudzu's trailer is the opposite of its exterior. It's brightly lit and tidy, nothing like Brian's place. It's a little extra, it's a little cramped, as any trailer would be, but the furniture is arranged neatly and the kitchen is spotless. Everything looks way newer than the trailer is on the outside. I imagine the raccoon did a lot of work to get it to look like this. Kudzu quickly guides me to a small, <sighs> small love seat and makes it, it makes as if to lay me down. I put a hand against his chest, feeling my stomach turn. Wait, I think I'd rather sit up. Do you need anything? Food or a drink? Kudzu's looking into my eyes with his dark browns. The browns, with his dark browns, the brows above them furrowed in deep concern. I nod slowly so as not to upset my stomach again. Just water, please. Sure. Kudzu quickly hurries off to the kitchen and I slowly lean into the cushions behind me. I'm not tired at all, but I feel numb and not just physically. My arms throb and it feels like the leather straps are still bound around my wrists. It even feels like they're being pulled by an invisible force. Like if I relaxed, my arms would float back into that fixed position. I shudder, hugging my body, then look around, trying to find something else to focus on. A grouping of three picture frames on a small side, small side table next to the love seat catches my attention. From where I'm sitting, I can see Kudzu in one of them, beaming at the camera. It's actually kind of weird to see him smiling like that. There's an arm around his neck, and I start to lean over a bit to see who it is. Here. Kudzu appears in front of me again, holding out a glass of water. I straighten back up. I straighten back up against the cushions. Once I take the glass, he holds out his other hand with two white pills resting in the black pad of his palm. Acetaminophen, if you're in pain. 
I definitely am, so I take it in the glass without a word and swallow it down. For a second, my stomach sours and I feel like it's going to come back up, but only for a second. Kudzu steps back and watches me. Even though his face maintains his stoic, almost... It's stoic, almost glare. I see his hands fidgeting together in front of his stomach. I nod weakly at a recliner across from me. D you you want to sit or something? Kudzu seems to consider, then walks over to the recliner. He sits on the very edge of the cushion, back rigid, continuing to stare at me. I take another sip of water, less this time so as not to upset my stomach. It looks like he wants to say something, but keeps silent, lips pressed together. Kudzu watches me the whole time. What's wrong? Kudzu opens his mouth and closes it, thinking before opening it again. Are, are you okay? Yeah, sort of. I mean, I'm not gonna die, I think. I'm not really sure if I'm completely okay. Everything still feels numb. My thoughts feel sluggish, too, and something that's been nagging at the back of my mind since I got here suddenly bubbles up to the surface. Did, did you call the police? I absentmindedly reach for my phone in my pocket, but it's not there. I have no idea where it is at this point. Was it still at Leo's house? There's a tight look of consternation on Kuzu's face. Phones aren't working. Even my landline isn't working. My foggy brain tries to process this. What? Why? Did the phone lines break or something? Kuzu shakes his head. I... I don't know. Should we... Should we walk to my car or something and drive to Peyton? I look back out the pitch black window. We need to tell someone right now. Janice and Leo's still out there. There's no way Janice hasn't been found by now. There should be police everywhere. Where are the cops? I turn back to Kudzu, feeling sick again. Kudzu doesn't say anything, and he's got a strange look on his face, like he's trying to figure out how to tell me something. Finally, he stands up. I'll figure something out. Listen, I think I need... I think I need... I think... Blah. Listen, I think you need to get some rest. I frown. But we need to get someone out here. What if Brian comes after me? I shrink in on myself at the thought, feeling goosebumps erupt over my arms. Kudzu steps closer to me and awkwardly reaches out to put a hand on my shoulder. You... You'll be fine. Do you want to lay down in my bed? I don't say anything, my head trying, still trying to catch up. It's a water bed. Kudzu adds, as if that makes the offer more tempting. He thinks. You hungry? I have some muffins. It might help you get to sleep. I shake my head. What? No, I want to get the fuck out of here. A loud pop makes me jump and I stand up. I'm not sure what I'm about to do, but Kudzu reaches out gently to hold on to me before pulling me away from the window. Faintly, I can hear some shouting outside, but it's far away. What was that? Is that, is that someone shooting? I look at Kudzu, starting to feel desperate. He puts an arm around me, at the same time moving towards the end of the trailer where a big bed is tucked in. I don't know. A lot of things are happening right now, so I think we should stay here to be safe, okay? For now, at least. I hold on to the raccoon, unsure of what to do. Listen. He holds me by both arms, and I look back at him. You gotta trust me that we can't leave right now. I'll explain it all after you've rested it for a bit. He pauses. I can tell you you're not really here right now. I can... Oh, well, that would have been a... Man, that would have been a big, uh... <laughs> that would have been a big reveal. I can tell you you're not really... Okay. <sighs> I can tell you're not really here right now. Here right now? You'll feel better once you wake up, alright? The thought of laying down is tempting despite feeling like I'm going insane. If I sleep, I don't have to think. Just blank, just blank my mind and rest. My head is buzzing and I feel like laying down might straighten things out. Kudzu gently but firmly forces me to sit down on the bed. Despite his slender build, I can feel the strength in his lean muscles. But what about Brian and Duke? Kudzu slowly pushes me back down onto the bed, the water underneath the surface sloshing faintly. I haven't been on an actual waterbed for years. Carl used to have one. Where's Carl? Where's everyone? I want to go back to the motel and find my friends again, but Kudzu seems adamant on keeping me here. I, uh, I got Leo's gun, saw it on the ground when I went to check on you guys. He must be able to tell from the look on my face that I'm not at ease because he reaches out again and rests a hand on my chest. It's still awkward, but it's comforting at least. 
I'll be here all night. Nothing's gonna happen. That does make me feel better. At least well enough to maybe get some sleep. Okay. I stare at the ceiling as I lay back. I still feel numb, but in a way that helps me blank my mind. And what feels like less than a minute, I pass out. God, this is a quite a roller coaster. Oof. I feel like if I keep walking along the train tracks, I'll be able to find my way out of here. I make sure to walk in the middle, using the planks like stepping stones. The steel rails on either side of me feel like some sort of barrier, a protection to whatever it is that's out there. A f I feel a presence in front of me, though, a sort of pressure that builds as I continue to walk. Looking up, I can see that it's coming from that weird grove of trees that bunch up around the train yard. Something is crouched in front of that grove, staring at me from the trees. I keep walking, though, because for some reason I don't feel like I have anything to worry about as long as I stay on the tracks. I notice something else behind the hunched figure. A few bulky objects hang from the trees. I know what they are before I can make them out. I keep staring at them as I draw closer, ignoring the thing that's watching me as I do, hearing it breathe as I pass it. Now I can see there are several bodies hanging from the trees. They're of all shapes and species. Some hang by their necks, others by a wrist or ankle. One of them passes me within a few feet, and I notice that it doesn't have legs. Both of them cut off at the thigh. It's a wolf, and he dangles by one of the stumps. Blood stains his dusty, cream-colored pants and shirt all the way up to his face. As I pass him, he slowly turns on the rope as if he's following my progress. I look down at the corpse's face, the mouth hanging open, eyes wide. It looks like, it's like he wants to tell me something important. I can feel my body again, but it's numb and heavy. Slowly, I open my eyes and see the beige ceiling of Kudzu's trailer. I flick my eyes to the right and see Kudzu there, but only on his back. He seems frozen, like he's in a photo. He's not even breathing. I can't see the window very well from here, but from the small corner I do see... I see eyes. When I wake up, Kudzu is next to me in the bed, his back to me, one of his ears folded under his leg. Having been with Leo for a few years, I know that can be pretty painful when you wake up. So I reach out and try to slowly adjust Kudzu's ear from under his head, but he immediately wakes up. He makes a funny snorting sound before suddenly jerking up halfway off the bed, looking back at me. I smile sheepishly. Sorry, I was trying to fix your ear. Kudzu reaches up, poking at the ear. Ow. Uh, thanks. I notice on the bedside table that there's a small plate with what looks like a blueberry muffin on it. Kudzu notices and reaches out for it. You want to eat? I uh, ate a couple earlier myself. I didn't realize how hungry I was. He lowers his ears. Still. Still one left, though. My stomach has settled for the most part, so I take the plate from him. Thanks. It's still dark outside, from what I can see. Did we sleep through the whole day? I realize that I've completely lost track of time. What time is it? Kudzu reaches over to the bedside table, grabbing his phone. 2.30 in the morning. I rub my face. Did we sleep through the day or something? No, you were asleep for like two hours. Really? It felt like it had been days since what happened at Brian's trailer. Yeah, I found you at around midnight. Kudzu turns nimbly on his rear in the bed, facing me with his legs crossed. How are you feeling? I'm okay. Kudzu gives me a long, hard look. Again, he has the expression of wanting to say something, but he's holding back. What is it? Kudzu lets out a breath. Listen, I'm not going to ask what happened with Brian, but if you ever want to talk about it. Talking about Brian is the last thing I want to do, and I can feel the threat of violent shivers coming up my spine just thinking about him. Kudzu reaches out one of his black hands to rub up my shoulder. Awkward and comforting, as always. I've, I've uh, been through some stuff myself. Kudzu catches himself. Not saying I know what you went through, but, but I know how it can feel to have something really fucked up happen to you. I don't think I've ever seen Kudzu stumble over his words like this. I mean, I'm not trying to say that it's comparable if, compar comparable if he, uh... Kudzu trails off, seemingly stunned at his own lack of delicacy. For the first time since I left the trailer, I feel a little bit like laughing. I reach up to rub Kudzu's own arm, feeling like I need to comfort him now. No, it's fine, man. He didn't do anything like that. At least, not how you think he would. Kudzu watches me. 
I know he's not gonna ask, so I go on. He, uh, has a thing for asphyxiation, I guess. Oh, jeez. Kudzu's eyes immediately go to my neck. I'm fine! It was just creepy. Creepy definitely doesn't begin to describe it, but I don't think now's the time to go into details. I look out the window again, and aside from a few orange, orange dots of light from far away lampposts, it's black. So, can you tell me what's going on now? Kudzu runs a hand through his head fur, sighing heavily and looking out the window with me. Oh, he's gonna start explaining the shit that's going on le less than a minute before my timer goes off. Of course, my timer is a huge cock blocker. <laughs> sure you don't want to wait till morning? I really don't think I'm going to be able to fall asleep again, honestly. Kudzu continues to stare out the window, and that's when I really start to wonder what it was that I missed. So, yesterday, about noon is when I saw some weird stuff going on. Kudzu looks at me. Your friend TJ, he came kind of, uh, he was kind of, he came kind of jogging up the road. My mind flashes back to when I saw TJ running past the diner. I hadn't had time to really figure out what he was doing before Duke barged in. You guys, I'm going to pause it there before we get we really get further into this. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, this has been a bit more of a, light, a lighter episode. You know, Kudzu's there. He's taking care of us. He's helping us. I appreciate Kudzu. Kudzu's awesome. Apparently, there's a, uh, a, good, a, a side character for every... Uh, for every main character, so if you go uh, each per, so each character has their own path, and each character has their own side character on the side. So I am very much looking forward to that. Um, man, we really want to see what happens with everyone. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell for the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.